Welcome, agents, or whomever may have stumbled across this field report. You know, I often ask myself, does it make me insane to talk to this microphone, record a jumbling of words and emotions together to hopefully reach the ears of those willing to heed my advice? Maybe. Maybe someone will hear my pleas. Maybe you are a division agent come to save us all. We've heard the same story in New York, except their division agents went bad. One in particular caused more problems than the criminals, the cleaners, and the militaristic last man battalion. But months after the Donald flu decimated New York, our capital is under threat, and you are the only hope our shattered democracy may have. Welcome to DC. Washington, DC. America's historic seat of power, multiple landmarks echoing ageless importance from a long since past generation. But our capital is under threat, mired by countless infections and loss, just as devastating as New York. While our information is still scattered, with the SHD network being relatively dismantled, we can place best assumptions on how this tragedy occurred, how the quarantine was seemingly broken. During the events of the dollar flu outbreak in New York, a group of division agents reported that several individuals were attempting to escape the island via its massive underground networks. It's still unknown how many were able to escape the quarantine, but this provides one possibility in how the dollar flu breached quarantine. Another reasonable explanation is that during the initial outbreak, many individuals likely saw their symptoms as a minor cold with a mild cough or a high fever. The dollar flu, or green poison, is a modified version of the smallpox virus. The symptoms, when acute, are very close, almost indescribably so, to having the average flu virus. It's likely that many of the first carriers of the virus were traveling when they became symptomatic, meaning that flights from John F. Kennedy or LaGuardia were likely carrying passengers with the virus. These individuals could have gone incredibly far, becoming a walking incubator for many unsuspecting victims across the continental United States and potentially beyond. In New York, a group of division agents came across recorded audio tapes of Aaron Kenner describing his plan for the culling of the populace. That our evolution as a species had been halted at the turn of the century. That he planned to bring about his own form of Darwinism once again to an off-guard human race. However, as we continue to gather more information inside DC, it's likely we will also unravel what became of our capital. Be warned, agents. DC is still rife with complications. Various criminal holdouts called the Hyenas have come together to become a de facto faction, a group of wolves with loose ties, or better, cowards feeling more powerful or safe in a large group. But make no mistake, these Hyenas are just as likely to kill themselves as they are to go after the JTF, civilians, or division agents. Perhaps it's due to some of these hyenas injecting themselves with an airborne green drug yet to be identified, but likely some variant of speed or another performance-enhancing culprit. Surely anyone who is willing to use a drug to give them enough vigor to charge a highly armed division agent to engage in melee combat is not of the right mental faculties. Insane or motivated by the surrounding anarchy, these hyenas are a threat to be dealt with, as they threaten not only the White House HQ of the regional JTF and division agents, but the civilians still clinging to the community inside DC. It's your job to work alongside the JTF, removing the threats of the hyenas and their control over the much needed resources. But the hyenas are not the only threat to the restoration of the American way of life. The Last Sons, a highly militaristic group of former soldiers and foreign mercenaries, are motivated by the opportunity to control DC, its historic wealth of knowledge and the various reserves of digital information. While we aren't yet certain of their true motivations, they may only resemble the Last Man Battalion in the military pedigree as the True Sons hold public executions and are seen as exerting their will upon a hapless populace. 
The True Sons are rumored to be led by a former JTF commander and are hell-bent on controlling the DC ruins. Finally, there are the Outcasts, a quarantine group of individuals that have survived against the odds, and the Black Tusk, a secretive military group that parallel the division's agency and expertise. When you enter DC, do not take any of these factions lightly. Assist the civilian populace where you can, but remember your objectives as a division agent should always be upheld. DC is seemingly in a much better state than New York. The JTF, while once again bewildered by external and internal strife, the infectious dollar flu and the general unpreparedness for any nationwide epidemic, has done an effective job of keeping hold of the White House, now turned into a makeshift headquarters for the rallying cries of restoration. As a division agent, you are charged with said restoration. You must sacrifice everything. You must rise above your fellow humans to bring back peace into the hands of its deserving people, now bewildered survivors, desperate for hope. We have learned much since New York, agent, but always be mindful. Behind every agent's visage is the potential for the seed of corruption and the touch of greed. Trust is a currency that should not be freely given. Good luck, agents. DC calls, and like a moth to the flame, you will be drawn out. Hopefully, you can withstand the heat. So, how do I describe the Division 2? Well, I'd say it's better than D1, but more or less a lot of the same. And this, at least in my mind, is a great thing. Ubisoft and Massive have taken a great concept from Town Clancy and transformed it into a playable version, something our imaginations can run wild within. It feels clean. The landscape plays as much a character as the various factions, and the new Black Tusk group feels like a good step in the right direction as the quote, end game threat, unquote. They do have a solid formula here and have learned from the don'ts of D1 and the story presentation with the limited information I have from the beta and the various Wikipedias gives me hope that this is another universe I wanna find myself explaining on this channel and diving deeper into within the game. It's always interesting to tackle lore on a title that sits outside Destiny, but always enjoyable with a slight touch of challenge. More lore videos to come on The Division 2, Destiny, and more.